TF2 isn't a game that has many traditional combos, as in the ability to go from one thing into another as an intended method. Many fighting games do, which brings us to a little-known indie title called Mortal Kombat. In June 1993, a highly anticipated sequel to the original Mortal Kombat would be released to arcades. Along with it, the debut of Kung Lao, a character whose specialty is a razor-rimmed hat that he uses to toss at his enemies, joining the ranks of Oddjob and Steve Rogers as someone who throws an object that you'd probably usually want to keep on your person at all times for one reason or another. The reason I bring this up is because this type of weapon is often referred to by a completely different name deriving from a supposedly fictitious Chinese story dating back to the Qing Dynasty. The Flying Guillotine. <laughs> While our flying guillotine resembles more of your traditional meat cleaver, it does function similarly to this weapon of Chinese legend, so let's talk about it. My name's Cody, and I'm here to ask one simple question and hopefully get one simple answer. How bad could it be? But first, I apologize for my transgressions, both current and past, and for what you're about to hear. If you had told me a year ago that I'd be working out of my home uh -huh. I would have told you a year ago oh, Interesting, now leave me alone Sorry that I look like a mess uh -huh. I booked a haircut but it got rescheduled Cody's been a little depressed and so today I'm gonna try just getting up, sitting down, getting back to work. It might not help, but still it couldn't hurt. Sitting down, writing jokes, singing silly songs. I'm sorry I was gone, but look, I made you some content. Daddy made you your favorite open wide. Here comes the content It's a beautiful day to stay inside I've been gone, is what I'm trying to say. In August of 2012, the game Sleeping Dogs from United Front Games and Eidos Interactive would be released onto Steam and join the ranks of many games to collaborate with Valve and Team Fortress 2 for a promo pack, releasing the Triad Pack. Containing the Red Tape Recorder, the Neon Annihilator, the Huel Long Heater, and the Flying Guillotine. These four weapons are largely not used, but let's focus for today on the Flying Guillotine. The Flying Guillotine initially only had four stats, throwing it at enemies make them bleed, long distance hits cause mini crits, 100% critical hits versus stunned players, and no random critical hits. These stats made it pair swimmingly with the Sandman, which back in the day would stun your enemies if you were able to hit them with the ball. This gave rise to long range scouts, to complement the close range shotgun style you primarily use, and while my heart longs for the old times of being able to drain the enemy's health and pick them off, it is understandable why it got nerfed. It wasn't fun to be made completely immobile against a class who was notoriously fast and powerful at close ranges. It gave scouts the ability to practically guarantee a pick with enough practice. The flying guillotine was eventually changed in Jungle Inferno. Both mini crits at long range and crits versus stunned players were removed and it was revised to have the charge time reduced at long ranges instead, leaving us with a flying guillotine that causes enemies to bleed, has reduced charge times at longer ranges, and has no random critical hits. It could be argued that this was done simply because currently no weapons or items currently can stun, with only bosses like Horseless Headless Horseman and the Ghost of Zephaniah Man able to technically stun at all. The flying guillotine on its own didn't really shine all that much, so a nerf wasn't precedented, 
but it was mostly those little stats on the Sandman and the Flying Guillotine that made it so powerful, and to my knowledge, it's one of the only official combos in the game's history. Sure, things like the Airstrike and the Base Jumper seemed to work well together, and were even promoted together in Love and War, but as I've covered before, they don't really work together all that well. The Flying Guillotine was actively promoted with the use of another item because it could really only be used at max potential with that other item, whereas the Airstrike does not require the Base Jumper and is even actively hindered by it, but that's just my two cents. Of course, there's also the Son of the Stick and the Sharpened Volcano Fragment, but who's talking about those anymore? Clearly, the Flying Guillotine is a long-range chip damage weapon. It's most often utilized in situations where you're fighting a class that you need that much more of an edge against. Snipers, medics, spies, all of these can be fought fairly easily without a whole lot of risk. But soldiers, heavies, pyros, you'll probably need as much damage done to them as humanly possible. Be warned though, pyros can reflect the guillotine back at you, though it does rarely hit its target on the way back if it ever gets reflected at all, but it is an important thing to know. These classes all have something that can make it very dangerous for you to go head to head with them. Heavy has a large health pool, Soldier has a fairly big health pool on top of rockets, Pyros feel like it quite literally sucks the health out of you if you're just a bit too close, and having that much more damage being done to them over time with something like the Flying Guillotine could make the difference if you can land all of your shots. I'm not fantastic at landing hits with it, you might be better, but myself it's often a literal hit or miss, but I guess that is the case with everyone. You need to be able to know how much to lead the projectile at many distances for many classes, on top of reading the way the enemy is going to go in the first place. Enemies are often going to be trying to mess you up as much as possible. Good players will keep movement as unpredictable as possible in order to bait you into whiffing your shots, including the flying guillotine. The guillotine pairs well with another bleeding weapon, the Rap Assassin, if you really want to have a good chunk of damage dealt over time by the time you get to them. Of course, it can still pair well with the Sandman, as even though they're no longer stunned, they are slowed, which makes it monumentally easier to land guillotine throws. Another couple of weapons it goes well with are the Babyface's Blaster and the Soda Popper. Both weapons utilize a charge meter that directly impacts their usefulness to the player as they're filled or unfilled. Seemingly little known, their damage meters can be filled using your other weapons too, like the pistol, rap assassin, and of course, the flying guillotine. This helps keep your meter charged at most times, and I could even see the babyface's blaster being of much greater use due to the slow periodic changing and constantly changing speed you'd be undergoing and if it's a playstyle you can adapt to, you'll be a very threatening long-range bleed scout. The Flying Guillotine on its own isn't going to win any awards, but it is a very unique tool in the scout's utility belt. Scout is a triple threat, he excels at all forms of combat. Close range, long range, and melee if he's left unchecked with his weaknesses being his fragility if he is caught. The Flying Guillotine is going to be your go-to for chip damage, and it pairs very well with other weapons in your loadout, but it can never be a pretty boy's pocket pistol and become a pseudo-primary. It helps make up for one of Scout's weaknesses, frequently doing so much damage yet frequently never quite enough to win the fight, and as long as you're being careful and have a plan, you'll rarely leave a fight with nothing left to show for it. That's all from me today, game over.